Guys, welcome to a classic film review of 1963's Station 6 Sahara, uh, starring Carol Baker, Denholm Elliott, Peter Van Eyck and Ian Bannon. Um, this is a great little cult classic with themes of power, masculinity and sexual tension, uh, all of which boil over when the stunning Baker crashes into an isolated oil refinery full of male workers. Um, imagine The Thing, uh, but if you swap the snow for a desert and an alien parasite, for a blonde temptress, <laughs> and you're not far off. Let's take a look. Oh, that's better. I like it when you say please. Get inside. Get inside. <laughs> Well, now you've all got something to look at. So, Station 6 Sahara sees uh, a character named Martin, played by Jorg Felmy, uh, posted to a small oil refinery in the Sahara Desert where he'll join the group of men currently stationed there. Now, it's not long before a car comes careering out of the night, uh, driven by a man with a, a female passenger. Uh, the guy's badly hurt and bedridden, uh, but the lady, who's played by the aforementioned Carol Baker, um, is soon up and about, and causing a bit of a stir amongst the workforce, um, a stir that will ultimately see the men turning on one another. Now, on the surface, it's a simple enough film. Uh, a small cast, uh, a single location, and not much going on in terms of dramatic narrative. Almost zero action set pieces. Uh, the joy, of course, comes in the form of the claustrophobic anxiety of the men, um, and the sweaty tension bubbling up as Baker begins to wander around the place, scantily clad. However, before Baker even arrives on the scene, we get a good look at the hierarchy of the station, specifically the power player from Peter von Eyck as Kramer. Uh, he's the boss and his orders include a load of silly little rules he's conjured up to keep his position as the group's leader, uh, one of which including forcing everyone to play poker with him on an evening as long as they lose to him, of course. Mr Kramer says um, when he wants to play and we, and we all fall in. You may fall in, Major. I don't have to. I don't think you quite understand. Oh, yes, I understand, but I'm not in the army any longer, Major. German or British. Well, you'll have to tell Mr. Kramer yourself. That's right, I'll have to tell him. And before I talk about one of these poker games, which is pivotal, let's check out the little cast of characters we have here. Ike's Kramer, as we mentioned, is the head man with an ego. Uh, we have Denholm Elliott's Major Macy as the by-the-book goody two-shoes of the group who plays brilliantly against Ian Bannon's loudmouth Scott who gets most of his entertainment from tormenting Elliot. Mario Adolf plays the almost silent mechanic Santos. Um, we have Jorg Felmy playing Martin um, who, as the new recruit, is kind of our main character of the piece initially anyway, and our kind of way into exploring this world. Uh, being the outsider, he's the one who challenges some of Ike's rules, uh, but eventually concedes to playing poker with him. And it's during this first game he gets one up on Kramer, and things seem like they're about to turn ugly, when suddenly there's a noise of a horn outside, and they all rush to see that car hurtling towards them. And then their troubles begin. Now, although it might not seem so today, Station 6 Sahara was considered pretty risque on its original release. Uh, the amount of sexual tension on show, clearly too much for the censors who slapped an X certificate on it and chopped out some of Carol Baker's nude scenes. Uh, the film's certainly pushing the boundaries of what passed as decency back in the early 60s. So Carol Baker became a household name after her turn as a title character in the 1956 film Baby Doll. Um, I haven't seen that movie, but I have seen another film she starred in that year, which is Giant. I think she pushed to be taken seriously as an actor, but roles like this one only further solidified her image as a blonde bombshell. Uh, I mean, she's great in this film. She doesn't go chasing any men or act inappropriately, really. Uh, she's just herself and all the men in their weakness come to her. I love that she doesn't really turn up until at least halfway through the movie, but because she's billed first and on every poster, um, we as the audience have that anticipation of when and exactly how she's going to arrive. Now, of course, the 60s would be a liberating decade, but it was early days and post-war censorship would still only allow Baker to appear almost nude, encouraging the audience to use their imagination to fill in the blanks. So one of the great things about Station 6 Sahara is its sense of isolation, and these guys, I think, are on five-year contracts out in the desert, which is a long time to be stuck out there with each other, uh, and their relationships to one another and their reaction to Baker's arrival is 
understandably emotional and sometimes volatile. Particularly the dynamic between Den Ome Elliott's sensitive major and Ian Bannon, who's constantly trying to get a rise out of him and frequently does. Never given that bent over there a passing thought, I suppose. I happen to respect women. Ah, uh, put some sand down, they'll tell you my war experiences. I respect women, what's that got to do with it? I've got your number, Major. I've got your number. All the interior work was done at Surrey's Shepherd and Studios in England, uh, with the desert scenes actually filmed on location in Libya, which always surprised me for such a low-budget affair, but it does lend the film a sense of that struggle to be out and about in the heat of the desert. Now, Station 6 Sahara was a remake of a 1938 German-produced French-language movie called SOS Sahara, uh, which in turn was an adaptation of Jean Martet's stage play, Men Without a Past. Uh, the movie still keeps its almost small play sensibilities. Its director, Seth Holt, making the most out of its limited cast, uh, some small confined sets and lots of juicy dialogue. Uh, Seth Holt, incidentally, only made half a dozen feature films, including Hammer Horror's Taste of Fear and the bonkers Betty Davis movie, The Nanny. Now, although marketed as the opportunity to see some guys leering over a gorgeous woman, the film does actually highlight the early simmerings of the women's liberation movement that would fully emerge in the late 60s um, and continue throughout the 70s and 80s. Uh, here, of course, we have a small society of men uh, with their own rules and hierarchy, and it just takes one no-nonsense woman to see straight through them all. Go check it out. I know that I had the winning hand. And the funny thing is, Mr. Kramer, I've still got the winning hand. We have drawn the same cards again, but exactly the same cards. And I can still beat you. 